This video is a demonstration of our Facebook earnings model. Please keep in mind that this video was created before the fiscal third quarter 2015 earnings release, so the values will be updated periodically. Please check back on our website, gutenbergresearch.com, for those updates. So the format is consistent with our other companies. Color legend in the upper left hand corner tells you that anywhere you see a blue cell, those represent Gutenberg estimates. Purple cells represent company guidance and orange cells represent consensus earnings estimates. Below that we have a summary of our price earnings based valuation, our discounted cash flow based valuation, and the 50-50 weighting of the two valuations. The financial statements start out with an income statement which we model on both a gap and non-gap basis. So you'll see Facebook we have some adjustments to the gross profit um, number. We also have some operating expense adjustments and some net income adjustments. So you can go through and um, we have the calculation for both, both methodologies. You'll see that some cells are shaded in dark gray. Those represent the historic values. And other cells are in light gray. Those represent future forecasted periods. And we also have some comments um, that are embedded in certain cells. So if you go to Facebook's investor relations page and click on the earnings conference call transcripts, you'll actually see the guidance that the company provides. So this is the transcript from the second quarter. And if we just search for guidance, we'll come down to the section about page 10 where they go through the guidance. Um, and they guide a number of line items. Uh, quarterly operating expenses, capital expenditures, stock-based comp, amortization, and tax rates. And we've incorporated those into our model. So if you see the first one we can go through, based on our second quarter results, we are narrowing the expense guidance for 2015. We now expect the year-over-year -year growth rate for total 2015 GAAP expenses to be between 55 and 60 percent. So if you go to our model, you can see that they're that comment is actually embedded right here and when they guide expenses they're actually talking about the operating expenses and the cost of goods sold which we've given the total um, total range here 11.58 billion to 11.95 billion and you can see that our model is projecting at 11.899 and that's based on um, what we need to get to the consensus estimate for the bottom line earnings number 052 or 208 for the full year. So how do we get to these earnings details up in the income statement? The answer is we break down the earnings based on the segment details. So if you scroll down to the segment section of the model and you can just expand these items here. So how do we do this for Facebook? We disaggregate the earnings based on the monthly active users for each one of these regions and the average revenue per user. So starting with the monthly active users, you can see here that this cell is just an equation so we don't have it highlighted in blue. And that's because we don't want our users to change those numbers, we want our users to change the growth rate number. Because it's difficult to project out exactly what your monthly active users will be next quarter but you can use the effects of seasonality and looking at historic details to figure out what the growth rate in users is going to be. So if you take US and Canada for example we're projecting a growth rate of 1% for next quarter and that is going to bring our monthly active users from 213 million to 215 million. And then the question is well how much are we going to earn for each one of those users? And for that you go down to the average revenue per user, user section and you can see that last quarter um, Facebook earned $9.30 per, per, per that quarter for each one of its US and Canada um, users. And so in our model we're saying that it's going to be a little bit less than what it was in June. So it's going to be $9.20 per user. Um, so with those two metrics you can then calculate what the total revenue per US and Canada is going to be 
um, by taking the average monthly active users in the region, so we've got last period and this period divided by two, and multiplying by the average revenue per user of 920. So it's saying that we're going to earn, or Facebook is going to earn, one billion nine hundred sixty-nine million dollars in revenue for you from U.S. and Canada um, users. And then we're doing the same exact process for each one of these other segments, and that gets us to our total sales of 4.4 billion. If you scroll up to the income statement, you can see that that's what's driving our top line um, revenue number. And this is in line with what the consensus expectations are for next quarter. So from there we have a cost of gap, uh, cost of revenue on a gap basis, and what we're doing is applying our gross margin to the revenue line item. So you can see that it's just taking revenue times what our gross margin expectations are. You can change this number as well. That gives you to your gross profit on a gap basis, and then we have some adjustments to the to um, to the gross margin for non-gap items. And if you scroll to the section below the ratios, you can see that we have a summary of what our non-GAAP adjustments are. So it's share-based comp, um, payroll taxes on the share-based comp, and some amortization of intangibles. So we're essentially applying a similar approach to what we've seen in the past to come up with this adjustment to gross, um, gross profit for non-GAAP items. Uh, then we have our operating expense section. Each one of these items is based on a percentage of revenue. So you'll see we have research and development expense to total revenue, marketing sales expense to revenue, general and administrative expense to revenue. So that's where each one of these values comes from in the income statement. And then similar to the cost of revenues, we have some adjustments for non-GAAP items that are hitting the operating expense line. Interest in other income, we calculate simply as a percentage of revenue, similar to what we're doing for the op OPEX items. And that gets us to our income before taxes. Then we can apply a sim simple effective tax rate. And this is one section where our estimate meets management's guidance exactly, and that's why that cell is purple. And then we have a, some adjustments to net income for non-GAAP items, which gets us to our non-GAAP net income. And then for diluted EPS on a non-GAAP basis, we're simply dividing that number by our diluted shares outstanding number. So that's what's driving the earnings in our Facebook model. Uh, below that, we have a section for the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. Uh, it's worth noting that on the balance sheet, a number of these accounts are extremely difficult to project into future periods. So for all these ones that are highlighted in blue, we're simply setting it to the balance that we had at the end of the second quarter. The accounts receivable line item and accounts payable are the two most important in our networking capital calculation which is used in our discounted cash flow valuation. So for those two balances we are actually projecting what it's going to be into future periods and to do that we use our performance ratios down below. So you can see that our accounts receivable balance for the fiscal third quarter 2015 is equal to our um, total revenue divided by our uh, payable receivables turnover 2.5 multiplied by 2 because we're going to take the average and then we're subtracting the previous period balance and we have a similar calculation for our accounts payable down here balance sheet is also linked to the income statement through retained earnings and it's linked to the cash flow statement because um, obviously the ending cash balance down here is going to become the starting cash balance up here. On the forecast for the cash flow statement you also notice a purple cell here and that's because management has guided the total capex um, for 2015 so we are meeting 
that number between 2.5 billion and 3 billion, so we took the midpoint of 2.75 billion capex. At the bottom of the cash flow statement, we have a section that calculates the net cash per share, free cash, um, free cash flow, and then the discounted free cash flow. So the way our discounted cash flow evaluation approach works is that this five-year period of cash flows represents our first stage in that valuation, uh, and then that's followed up with a terminal value stage. Once once the company re reaches maturity, it reaches a constant growth stage, and then the valuation is basically um, just a perpetuity. Below the cash flow statement, you'll see our multiple valuation section. So what we do for our multiple is we take the price on a daily basis, we subtract out the net cash per share, and then we divide it by the next 12 month EPS estimate, and that gets us to our next 12 month PE, forward PE ratio. Um, we calculate it on an average, a high, and a low basis for three months, and we're taking the average valuation for Facebook and essentially adding back the cash. So you see this equation, the value per share is equal to the earnings for the next four quarters times our multiple plus the net cash per share. And that's how we get to $92. Um, then the discounted cash flow approach is complex. There are a number of inputs, so we put a separate video on our website and also on our YouTube channel. If you're interested in using that approach, please go take a look. And that's it. That's the summary for this detail. So if you'd like to download this model, please visit our website, gutenbergresearch.com. You can click on the model store and then scroll down to find Facebook where you'll be able to download this by clicking this button here. Thanks for watching.